You know, guys, oh, I wanted to share something with you guys. This Titan tank. A lot. Not a lot, but I've, I've noticed several guys installing them. And they're installing them where I've had mine for about three years. So I wanted to give you guys a review. What I was trying to show you there is how low it, it sits. <coughs> My biggest concern, and I mean, I didn't know how they're going to do it. But I was really hoping when I was buying this thing that they weren't just going to have it sag. You see where my bars are? Like, you can see where the bars are and you can see where the tank. Like, guys, nothing to worry about. It's just a hair lower. But it really blends in really nice with the undercarriage. And it's not, it doesn't, like, stick out like a sore thumb, if you know what I mean. It's not just... Sorry, Chevy boys, but you know what I mean? Like, when you see a Chevy driving down the interstate certain years have those df tanks they're just hanging out there like a sore thumb see more or less it's flush um it is a little lower than the stock one but not by much so that's what i wanted to underline so while i'm driving here i wanted to share it with you hold on time put you on pause real quick get comfortable on my truck all right so not to have you boys hanging whoever's just curious to hear from me is it worth it or not I'll uh, tell you right now, don't waste your time thinking on it. If you, these are the little check marks, I, I, you know, checklists I'd make for myself. Uh, it's pretty silly. You should, one should know if they need a tank or not, but I'm just trying to help people. Um, if you tow something, if you hook up greater than 10,000 pounds behind your truck, uh, and if you leave out of town, you need a tank like this. No buts. It's just don't waste your time thinking about it. Just install one and thank me later, if you know what I mean. Um, so that answers that question now the rest of the rest of the video is going to be my point of view and my side of the story How I ended up one of these so here you go uh, <coughs> Max excuse me hold on a second All right now that I'm done coughing my lungs out <coughs> uh, My story goes like this I was uh building a, a company and all my comp all my company rigs got the got the auxiliary tank in the bed and i really wanted to keep my bed empty because you know this is a fairly multi-purpose vehicle for me and i'd really like to keep it that way and if i put a tank in the back it's just whatever just didn't want a tank in the back of my bed but i was a cheapskate okay or penny pincher and call me whatever you want but anyways i, I thought 1200 bucks i'm like man that's just a lot of money to to throw out an OEM tank that I already have and replace it with something else. Well, that didn't take much. One day Paul had to hook up to like, I don't know, it was, it was, it was a little bit over 20,000 pounds and I had to cover about 750 miles. It was a really tall load, long trailer, whatever it was. Um, so I was catching a lot of wind and I was very uh, crunched for time. So I had a push. I mean, I had a push. I pushed this truck so well that I managed to average 8.5 miles to the gallon. That is correct. 8.5 miles to the gallon was a 32 gallon tank on this truck. If you boys know how to do your math, you can imagine how often and how far I got on a tank of fuel because there isn't a, a gas station every mile and that eight miles to gallon with only a 32 gallon tank you really don't got much for a reserve and you really run out real quick so oh man was I furious and once I come back when I came back from that trip uh, there, there wasn't much thinking you know, I came back, trip, you know, next day you settle in, and uh, in the evening, I didn't even think about it. I knew that I was going to, I was going to do this. Uh, you know, I made up my mind that the $1,200 completely jumped out of my mind, because on the way there, I barely made it to one gas station, like I was really low on fuel, and I started thinking, I'm like, okay, cheapskate, yeah, yeah, you, you bent out of shape, quote unquote, over 1200 bucks. What do you think is going to happen once you run out of fuel? You know, 1200 bucks is not in the budget to, to, to do things right. And then when you're on the side of the road, who gives a rat's tail about a budget? It's a matter of uh, you find someone to help you, and you pay them, and you keep going. 
So that 1200 bucks is still going to be there that you're going to have to invest into your truck, but there's going to be a price tag to pay for it. So after I made up my mind already on the way there, that's why when I came back, I knew 1200 bucks wasn't an issue at all once you start looking at it from a logical side. So I came back, called Titan themselves, told them I need a tank. They sent it out. I installed it. Guys, I couldn't be happier. I don't have any problems. Um, the hardware, everything's solid. One thing I don't understand. No, not that I don't understand. I think they might have fixed this on the newer versions. I think they might have added another vent. But now, don't call me stupid here, but tank is very picky about getting it topped off. I feel like there's a there's an air bubble that gets created. So sometimes I could put in 48 gallons, sometimes I could put in 50. And I mean, I know I'm low on fuel. I know that, you know, I've really picked up all the fuel. There's a couple close calls and I don't understand why um, there's times I could barely get 45 gallons. And I mean, I know stuff varies, but based off of my gauge and my calculations, you know, and I could clearly see it once I pull up to the to the gas pump. The the elevation is gonna really affect me. Is what I'm trying to underline here. You know, typically elevation affects you a little bit, but not at that kind of scale. You know, it's like I'm seeing a five gallon difference at times. You know, I could already predict it. So five gallons of 55 gallon tank, it's just under 10 percent, which is quite a bit. But that's me complaining. Anyways, besides that, guys, I've had no issues. As I said, I've had this thing over three years. Absolutely nothing to complain about. Um, the thing is, I really haven't installed much much of these tanks. I believe I installed uh, two of them. And one of them uh, is a local guy. He actually follows me on this channel. Hey, uh, if, you're, if you're watching this, you know, if you feel free to <laughs> help out the guys and throw in your comment. Let me know how you like yours. But yeah, he has the same tank pretty much the same truck a little bit newer and yeah anyways that's my story just wanted to share it with y'all if for any reason any of you are on the fence you know i feel like i uh, answered the basics you know if you're consistently towing uh if you're consistently towing heavy weight long distance you sort of need a, an auxiliary tank because these 55 gallons they're great and all but you know you always got to subtract just for a rule of thumb let's just say 10 gallons for you can't run the thing dry you know so realistically you're working with 45 gallons you know so if you're consistently towing and you're towing heavy and, and long distance i would advise you to get the the tank the slip tank or auxiliary tank whatever people call it you know in in your bed because you're set for a thousand miles anyways boys as always you boys have a mighty fine day, and uh, may the Lord bless you.